for us, Dubai uh, has been always a center of business around the world. So our focus for the past 10 years to 15 years has been shifted to make it a business center and a sports center for everything. You know, they're, they're very proud of, of the city that they've built. They're very proud of their culture and they want to show it off to the world. So whenever they do anything, it's a spectacle. You know, it's the biggest, it's the best, it's the first. And, you know, from a competitive standpoint, it was very unique. When assessing a field of, of athletes coming into a competition, there's a lot of factors that you want to weigh in. Some of them are, are easier than others. You, know, you can look at, oh, what, what is this competition? We know at the Dubai Fitness Championship, you're going to have an opportunity to do things that you likely won't do in other competitions. It went really fast. This is the 10 year of the event, but it's only been my sixth year of the event. So once uh, you start going, you kind of lose track of time and you're just going through workouts. You don't really start, you don't really have time to think about what day it is. You're just getting one workout done and going on to the other one, but it definitely went a lot faster than I anticipated. I think that every athlete that competes at the highest level has a Dubai on their checklist. But there was two or three times during the climb where I was thinking, this is crazy. I'm just, you're just going up and up and up and there's just no, there's no reprieve from this white hallway the whole time. So every competition has a different reason for existing, and this one is meant to be a, you know, a showcase of the city, of this part of the world, but also of some of the best athletes. Obviously there's a lot of European representation here, but they have a pretty good draw globally. You know, we have athletes from Canada, the United States, South America, and New Zealand, Australia. So pretty much get a little bit of everything, a few athletes from Asia, um, and they all get to come here, experience Dubai in a little bit of a unique way. See, what we have this year is like a diverse of expert athletes with new athletes. In the sport of fitness, and for the past 10 years, most of the top level athletes start in Dubai. The real history of the event is that we've been known for discovering the people before they were well known around the world. So. This has always been the place where they came. We met them, we saw them compete, they tested themselves like in the best in the world, and then they went to the CrossFit Games and people saw them. In the CrossFit world, 50 people are known and they're the 50 people you see everywhere. We don't need the same 50 people. We want new blood, we want new people, we want new opportunities for the young and upcoming athletes to come and showcase what they can on really good venues and between really good names. So. Um, I think it, the way it worked out this year is really good.
this year in Dubai, the, the structure of the competition is something that athletes are going to have to navigate and manage well. You can't afford to take an event off. The level of athlete is too high, the margin for error is too small. And if you only have an hour after you've just sent it on whatever the test is, to come down from that, do whatever you need to in terms of nutrition, recovery, body work, and also just like gather yourself mentally, but then 20 minutes later you have to prepare for the next one where you have to go out on the floor again and give everything you have in a totally different test. That's something that regardless of how good you are with a barbell or moving your body through space, if you haven't done that a few times, it's really difficult to manage. Having a good support team, having some competition experience, and understanding what it takes for you to get back up and do it again with a small amount of time is one of those elements of competitive CrossFit that you can't necessarily measure on paper, but this year, particularly in Dubai, is something athletes who know how to do that well will capitalize relative to their competition. I was hoping that nobody will be here at 12. Turns out everybody was thinking the same as I was. <laughs> it was a bucket list to be here ever since I've seen some videos in the documentary from 2019. So I'm really happy that I decided to come out. It's my first competition after the games, so I have to see the feeling on the floor and everything. It's cool. We have everything in Dubai. We have mountains in Dubai. We have tall buildings, we have beaches, we have deserts, we have everything. So every year I'm trying and my team, we're trying to think of uh, something outside the box. I really want to see something special, you know, some kind of thing we are, we are not used to do, uh, something that really represents Dubai. So the desert or a trail in the canyon or something, you know, but we are in Dubai, so we want to play with the elements of Dubai. Or where better could we go than Burj Khalifa? We've done, as you said, the desert, we've done the beach, we've done even in the ice ring and the uh, ski slope, and Burj Khalifa was the way to step it up. I was telling my friends before that if the first event is going to the Burj Khalifa, that's, that's all I need. I mean, I just want to feel that experience. I was quite excited. I think if they are running up the Burj Khalifa, it's like a very fun event. I, the thing I like is when you go to a place and you do a competition that kind of, or an event that represents that place. So you know, running up the tallest building in the world would be like uh, an epic event here. Yes, first time in Dubai at all, so it's fun. You're it's hoping for a third one? Yeah, to the top of Burj Khalifa, or maybe like the 125th floor. I think that's where the observation deck is, so. <laughs> If that is the first event, we're going to be happy about that. See, the idea has been there for a long time. Um, last year, after the final event, um, I had a call from the radio congratulating me about the event and how successful it was. And they asked me a question. What is hidden for next year? So the thought was Burj Khalifa to run the stairs all the way up, the Burj Khalifa challenge. Two or three weeks ago, we tried talking to the Burj Khalifa owners, trying to get permits for this. And luckily, we had a, per, a permit and they accepted uh, the, 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 the request of having those athletes running all the way up. And they were the first people to run it all the way up. And that was like, that was great for me. Like, I, I was super happy with my team that they were accepted to, to, do, to, to do it. What are we doing? Okay, Matt. Please in my car now. Are you ready? Is he ready? Yes. Good to go. Jake, you ready? Yes. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. We wanted to go up the steps of the Burj. And he said there's no way, too dangerous, like, you know. But he had this thing up his sleeve the whole time because here we are. <laughs> it would be badass to just run up the stairs of the Burj. And he's like, hey, we've thought of it in the past. Let me see if I can get it done. And um, it was on, and then he was like, hey, they just permitting's too hard. But what do you, you know, he was just playing games because 
he sewed and he wanted to be surprised. But um, yeah, we, we've been debating it a while and thought this would be such a cool Dubai authentic experience and probably terrible. Yeah, one of us. And so I'm gonna go beat myself up going up 160 flights of stairs. He just said, you know what he just said to me? That what? Brick. He's like, hey, uh, are you sure you're gonna do it? I, I, I don't wanna wait for you. I'm like, oh, I can keep up with these fucking guys. He's like, <laughs> no, you can't. Uh, you know, like stuff like this is super, super cool, super fun. You know, usually like for competitions, like we're, we're just trying to have like good show, good, good competition. Um, but like having a landmark like this and then getting the access to it, like it's not just showing up with athletes and doing the workout. It's like you need permitting, you need logistics, all that stuff. So the fact that, you know, they're able to pull it all together is pretty wild. When we, we were told when we got here that, you know, we all piled in the car and we were told that we're going, going out to the desert to test event one. And, you know, everyone's kind of like, ah, bummer, you know, the Burj Khalifa didn't happen. And then Saud pulls right in, opens his trunk, pulls out six vests, hands us each a vest and just goes, all right, run to the top. We started trying out the event with no vests. So I took one of the fittest athletes in UAE to test this workout with no vest and a couple more athletes, they were like super good in endurance to test it out. We want to see if the time domain is good. Those guys have finished the workout within less than 30 minutes. We weren't amazed. Like, okay, you have done it, it's nice, it's, it's tough, but it's not impressive to get it done with sub 30 minutes. And one of the things that um, the, the DFC had always wanted to do was have this chance to hype the Burj Khalifa during one of their events. But it's, it's a, a very private area. You have to you know, apply for permits early and get approval to be able to access there. There's certain things that are somewhat sacred about it. So regulations in terms of competition to make sure that we're not disrupting, you know, the sanctity of that building uh, needed to be adhered to. Uh, with the support of the government here and the event organizers making it a big initiative, we were able to have that opportunity this year. So we had another endurance athlete called Hal Halvard Borsen. Uh, Halvard is an endurance skier and he is super fit and his lungs are unstoppable. So he had a, a weight vest and he finished it in 30 minutes and 4 seconds. And when he was done, he told me this was super tough and it was one of the toughest events he have ever done. His Highness uh, Sheikh Hamdan, the Crown Prince of Dubai, have done the challenge a day before our competition. And, uh, and he posted his times. So we had an idea of where the athletes can be done. So no one will beat 31, as I thought. And the slowest guy will be around 45. So, you know, we, we got to test it and, uh, you know, it's... It's just a cool event. You can't replicate it anywhere else in the world. You need, you need 160 flights of continuous stairs. <laughs> oh, great warm up. 200 more, right? No? Okay, good. <laughs> I, uh, you die on the last 20 to 30 flights. It's so hard. How did you how did you enjoy that? Oh, I was, dude, I was at floor five, and dude, my heart rate three two one. I was at floor five, and I was like, oh, I think I need to stop. I was doing two stairs at a time for the first fifty floors. Yep, guys, that was a that was a huge mistake.
that is a cool workout. Um, it is a grind. It is climb stairs, climb stairs, turn right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes turn left, right? Like the stairs keeps on, on changing, I guess. Oh yeah, they did. They did, yeah, right? Yeah, they did. Some of them told me like whenever it changes, it rests like the other part yeah. of the body. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, the first event as Matt, I think you expected that workout, didn't you? Well, I, I wanted that workout, okay. but I didn't know if logistically, like we'd be able to get permits or be allowed to do it, anything like that. Um, so I'm psyched. This is going to be one of the coolest, coolest venues, coolest workouts. And I mean, you want to talk about a test of fitness of just like, just go. No one better than Matt Fraser to test workouts with it. <laughs> yeah. No one. So yeah. this was a surprise for, especially with a collaboration with Hard Work Pays Off. Uh, we said we're gonna have a surprise event for them and they approved it with us to have this event But we just told them about like everything was organized and done. Yeah, so, so they we, were surprised Yeah, we, we didn't know that we got the permit and so this morning We thought we were going out to the desert to test a run and then we pulled in here and I was like, all right Let's go boys <laughs> <laughs> Good luck guys Of course Hello everyone. <coughs> Salam alaikum, that's what we say here. Welcome to Dubai for the 10th anniversary of Dubai Fitness Championship. Uh, of course, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today we're going to announce five events, knowing that the first event was published and announced by His Highness the Crown Prince of Dubai. You guys all have seen it. Climbing the Burj Khalifa. It's called Burj Khalifa Challenge. 160 stores. 160 levels. That's like no one have ever done this in the world. So this event's gonna be, you guys gonna be the first people on earth to climb the tallest building of the world. With a 10 kg vest for males, and 7.5 kg for females. I think the Burj run is going to feel terrible, but it's not going to beat them up that bad. They won't feel that bad the next day. I'm excited. I even didn't really listen to that second lot because I think I'll just worry about climbing 160 floors first and then worry about the rest of the workouts. Yeah. I like this, this number for the weekend. <laughs> it's my first time. On this, on, with this number. Our legs are gonna be fried yeah. after <laughs> the whole weekend, so it's gonna be good. Uh, we see something in the morning, so uh, we, we thought something about this, and it will be great, excited to be the, the first people to make something like this. Um, let's see, let the, let, let the show begin. It's the swimming thing, right? It's just like maintaining a, a cadence or you know a technique or whatever, whatever that is, and just like, you know, finding that fraction of a second, every staircase, every, you know, every lap. Um, just try not to, uh, try not to let those moments and those seconds slip away. I mean, honestly, the first thing that comes to mind is the Scandinavian athletes. Like they have a lot of cross country skiing experience, going up mountains, and I think that that kind of step, step, step process will pay off for them. So someone like Matilda Garns, who's not only from that part of the world, but also a little bit taller, I think the long legs will help out. But also I think there's an element of um, just kind of understanding what you're actually doing in there. At first it, it looks good. I'm excited for the event tomorrow to climb up the stairs. It's going to be fun. A lot of time to think about life. <laughs> it's going to be a freaking hard event. Uh, I don't know like how long does it take to, to climb, but uh, it's, uh, it's going to be crazy hard. Like. For me, the only thing will be like just one stair at a time and just stay inside that mental focus is going to be over and it's not going to last forever. So just like try and, and win the first one and then just ride away from there. But like we, we did it with zero warning. Okay. So like we, we thought we were going out to the desert for a run and then oh, Saud pulled into the Burj, gave us vests and was like, go. Oh, so we had okay. no warning, no warm-up, okay. anything. No mental prep either. Nothing. nothing. Um, so like, 
it's warm, yeah. like you're indoors. And so like breathing wise, how you're did fine. it feel? Okay. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a regular inside a gym working yep. out. Okay. Yep. And how are your legs now? Perfectly fine. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. It's okay. like when I feel like I'm doing a little journalism. So we had six of us go. None of us were like beat up. Okay. We were all thrashed. Yeah. But quick right recovery, yeah. body feels fine, like okay. calves aren't even sore this morning. Okay. You kinda we should walk around just like <laughs> Good morning again. I took the last coffee. Uh, you know what that means? You know, if he passes me, you know what that means. How's it going, buddy? So good. Yeah, it's pretty early, but feel good. Excited to go up. 160 stores. I think I'm gonna try to just not die on the first 40 floors. Try to hold steady pace and. Yeah, hold the hard pace until the end and hope uh, hope that'll be enough. It's interesting because it's time trial. I think it's the only way to do that. But it also means that you really need to pace it on, on like your own game and you can't really worry about anyone else. They're like two minutes apart uh, for, for every athlete. So yeah, you don't really want to be overtaken. Yeah, did you try it? The workout? Yeah. I have not. I took the elevator. I think I took four elevators. It's really nice. Your ears pop about two or three times. I think the highest I've been before there was um, 125. So 160 was quite nice. You might not never have a chance to do something like this personally or a competition again. So I actually think like the simplicity of it is really nice. Like, you know, run upstairs. I love uh, that you have uh, no perspective. You're just on your own. So the, the, there's a mental fortitude component of it. Yeah, it's possible that you don't see anyone the whole time. Yeah. Or that you know you have this lingering fear in the back of your head that someone's coming. <laughs> and what do you do with that? Yeah, because you healed them for quite a while. Like, you know, all of a sudden you hear the stairs, the footsteps, then the breathing. And you go, oh no, I've got to keep going. Hey, Oyana. I'm okay, I'm very full. It's still some hours. Yeah, yeah, we've got a few hours yet. How do you sleep? Good, good. Um, a bit shorter than usual, but good. Yeah. How many floors does your apartment have back home? <laughs> two. <laughs> and I moan about walking up those two flights of stairs every day. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> how do you know about how you're gonna? Or in your mind, you already know what you want to do and how you want to go about it. I don't know. I think oh, that, maybe I haven't thought about that yet because we're not actually on for a while. Um, but I think it's one of those ones that you just want to start at a pace and just try keep just try hang on, see see how long you can last. Um, yeah, we'll see. I think it's one that will be uh, you're going to be on the, on your own a lot, so you got a lot of time to think, which is always nice. So for me, I told myself after the ski slope last year, you have to be ready for anything. And I thought that I was until they announced the Push Kalipa Challenge. Living in the UAE for the last seven years, every time we come to Dubai, I look at the Burj Khalifa and Elliot and Anne always go, it's so big. Every time we come, it's so big. On s'en rend pas compte en fait, mais on le regarde comme ça, on se dit putain mais c'est pas possible en fait que à pied on va aller là-haut. Before I said to someone, I, I think it's just going to feel like swimming in a lap pool, where you're just looking at the snake on the bottom of the floor and you're going up and back and up and back. And for me, it just that's what it felt like. I will uh, figure out a way to uh, climb these stairs. When we arrived at the venue, I was like, okay, this is really happening. <laughs> but we arrived and we had to leave everything on the bus. Athletes were given a chance to go to the bathroom and then taken down into sort of the underbelly of the Burj Khalifa. They started on negative two, I guess, is what the floor called. I really wanted to win that event. Um, when it was announced, I was like, it's, it's endurance, it's, it's a grind, it's a mental and a physical event like it's perfect for me 
So we went underneath and you look up and you can really see like this thing towers so high above us, you, you basically can't see the top. We've always had an iconic or flagship or landmark event day one. It's been the desert, it's been the sea, uh, it's been the ice rink in the previous years. So it, it's always sort of an anchor of the things that you can expect in Dubai that are bigger and better and wider. Hard. I'm not having fun, but I'm enjoying the moment right now. Um, it feels good that uh, people are trying this one of the toughest workouts in the world, I guess, so far in fitness. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was a little surreal to be at the start line down there for a few athletes. Just the tension, the, the nerves. Anytime you're starting a, a competition like this, I mean, this is the first workout of the competition. So adrenaline's high, excitement's high, your body feels great. I think that the trap in this workout is, is being too excited in the first five to 10 minutes. So the athletes that can manage those emotions and just settle into their comfortable pace will probably pay off on the back third of the workout. And obviously this field has a huge diversity of experience, a lot of young athletes. So hopefully they can manage that well. And I would favor some of the more experienced athletes to temper those emotions and have a more steady performance you know, throughout the 35 minutes or whatever it takes. It was just never ending. Walking up there, like 33 minutes, the first 20 steps I ran up, then I had like a desert in my mouth. I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, I'm small, I don't have the longest legs. I must have, I need to be smart getting up those stairs. Um, but I knew it would be just a grind. I think most of the people started a little bit too fast and then started slowing down towards the end and the same happened to me. It was one of those workouts, it was just a gut check. There were so many moments where it ran through your head like, oh, should I slow down? Should I uh, stop here for a second? But it was almost like I could stop and I'm just gonna feel just as bad. I sort of went into it thinking, start at a pace and just try keep it. We are so used to racing each other on the floor, adrenaline is high, the crowd is around, and this was like, you are just you and the stairs. You and 160 floors, and it's about who can get there faster. It's just you. You're, there's nobody around, there's no music, there's no... Nobody will know if you stop for a second. Nobody will know if you slow down, ease off a little bit. Like it's, there's no crowd, nobody's watching. It's kind of just you, you and your own integrity. You needed to know in yourself that you were giving it your all. Continuous fighting in the head to just, you know, keep doing like one more floor, one more flight of stairs. focusing on little technical things. Oh, you know, I'll try hand over hand, or I'll try two hands at a time, or let's try one step at a time for a fight. Let's try two steps at a time. And... At one point, I started bear crawling up. I was like, I needed to try different ways. What was gonna be more efficient? I was like, bear crawl's gotta be easier. Doing it for two lengths, I was like. Um, when you think about it, walking upstairs is not that hard. And, and then there's no strategy. You can't say I'm going to start fast and then slow down or start slow and get faster as I go. It's just deal with it as you go. <laughs> I'm from Germany. I want to be prepared. I want to know what I have to do. But I, I wasn't. So then I just like switched it and said, OK, no, just get up. And after 35, 33 minutes, it's over. look at my heart rate and just kind of play with those things and kept me like very present and tried to keep myself very honest with every single step and every single flight that, you know, no breaks. And I think that helped me get a pretty good score.
never in the competition you will be alone at your competition floor basically for 40 minutes doing your workout. So for me, I didn't see any athlete during the climb. Nobody passed me, I didn't pass no one. So I was alone at the stairs for 40 minutes and you had to sometimes like tell yourself this is, this is a competition, like you are actually competing. Yeah, I wish I paced a, a bit too much. I think it was because I felt tired. Uh, so I wished I pushed a bit earlier, like I could run in the end. <laughs> but climbing up the tallest building in the world, yeah, crazy cool experience. There's no way anyone's preparing for that or could ever prepare for that. And it's not like we'll ever do anything like that again. First woman up. It's an honor. Really, such a cool experience. I just noted that I stopped running real quick. It flights and I was out. I need to pack that in. How good is this? That was fun. Looking forward to these times. How did you pace it? Just go too fast in the beginning, beginning, too slow in the middle, and too slow in the end, I think. <laughs> but next time I will be faster. <laughs> 80, 80e étage, mais les jambes étaient mortes. Et euh, bah, après, il fallait juste euh, timer le nombre de, nombre de secondes par étage. Et euh, puis voilà, il fallait pas réfléchir. C'était bien. C'était bien. Combien de flights tu as Seven. Seven. Vraiment, tu ne peux pas voir rien. Donc, c'est juste toi et les lumières jaunes. Et quelques stairs. Qu'est-ce que tu penses de monter les escaliers Je ne sais pas, j'étais juste compté, juste compté, compté. Until seven, and then again and again, looking at the the levels, and then that was it. The different kind of pain that it's just like it's so hot. By the time you get to like hundred, you're like I've only got sixty, but that's like the longest part. Whew. I the two people I heard were in front of me. I passed, so no one from behind me came up. But uh, I thought that you can't tell. You can't tell if it's a bubble. You could just hear someone else, and you're like, at first I was like, oh no, someone's catching me. So I kind of went quicker, but then I caught someone. I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. Do you know who you passed? I passed two girls, yeah. The two that started ahead of me. <laughs> it was so cool, and it was actually not that bad. Like it went faster than I thought it will, but I was always like, where's the corridor? Where's the corridor? I was always asking the. Uh, the guys, but they were they wouldn't help me, so I was just trying to stay focused yeah. and mental tough. <laughs> that is really cool, and every athlete that finished said that that was one of the coolest experiences they've ever had. So that's a win right there. But what a cool event to see the best athletes in the world, really, the, truly the fittest people in the world, get absolutely pushed to their limit just hiking up a you know a bunch of flights of stairs is so cool. I mean, we've never seen anything like that where we're sort of like. You can't run, really. You just got to hike. Um, and, you know, to put them at their rev limiter like that, to doing something like that, super cool. It's an awesome test, yeah. Absolutely exceeded all expectations. I, I keep thinking someone was right behind me because it's like echoes, but they weren't. <laughs> but I think that's quite good because it makes you keep going. And it's one of those things, if you stop, you're like, it's going to take so much longer. But the old lung, you know, and taste blood here, that one. Wow. Is there a zip line here somewhere? Probably not this high. Oh my god, I love the UAE. I'll be back. <laughs> yes. Good day. Good day. Uh, it, it was very tough, my brother. It was very, very, very tough. It was dizzy, but. Uh, You want to know your time? What? You want to know your time? No, yes. 30.37. Second 30. place was one minute behind you. Oh, nice. <laughs> the secret was no watch for this workout. Only you and your shoes and the walls. It was very tough. Personally, I think Burj Khalifa challenge was the most epic event ever has been pulled in any fitness event around the world. Like, if you tell me just run Mount 
Everest would be crazy and a, a crazy idea. This was a crazy idea too. And overall, the 10th year DFC was a massive success. And you never know when you put on a competition like this how it's gonna go. The emotions were palpable, the, the races were great, uh, the performances were epic, and I, I can't imagine how happy the, those guys are with what they managed to pull off in year 10. During the event, when you see the event, you kind of think of what could I change next year. So I had a, a small chat with my team. I'm like, what do you guys think? As history has proven, it's always to evolve. It's always to bring uh, new challenges for the athletes, improve on the venues. As you've seen in the past years, we've used the tennis stadium. Before that, we've used uh, the Dubai Mall ice rink. Stepping up the level is a certainty. Um, we will make sure that it's better than this year. I love showing the parts of Dubai. I love showing how Dubai is, is different. Dubai can show you like everything.